Well, why I have the circuit set up from the last video, you know, sans that transistor, I want to see the switching speed of various components, and I'll try out some LEDs, transistor, various diodes. So what I'm doing here is I have the microcontroller, which is programmed on its pulse width modulated output for one megahertz signal, and that output just feeds through this 220 ohm resistor and this is the device under test. So channel 1 is connected to the output of the microcontroller and channel 2 is connected to the other side of the transistor. Of course the other ends are connected to ground and that way we can see the switching performance of the device under test. Now it's important to use your scope properly when you're doing this test because of the uh, resistance, the high frequency and the capacitance you want to use your scope bleed set for 10x mode and I also decreased this resistor I, I did have a uh, 1 kilo ohm resistor in the other video but I decreased it down to 220 I can't really go any lower because these outputs are current limited to somewhere around 20 milliamps. So that's pretty much the setup. And right now I have um, the two waveforms. Yeah, you know, they're, they're the same because there's really no load or device connected yet. So what I'll do is I'll put this camera on the tripod, just point it at the scope and rattle off the component I'm testing. Okay, first off, I'll take a look at these cheap 5mm LEDs I got off of eBay. It's the red color LED. Of course, it brings the voltage down because the forward voltage on this type of LED is about 2 volts. So you can see that. And as I turn up the level here, it does have a delay of turn on. You can see that there. So it is a bit slow to turn on. The microcontroller does seem to have clock jitter. Either that or there's just some noise. Let me turn this back down again. Now look at a 5mm LED. Another one, it's a green Cree LED. And these indium gallium nitride LEDs have about 3 volt drop. And that's what you're seeing there. It is pretty quick to turn on. But you can see here there is this kind of uh, slow turn off curve. It starts turning off quick and then it's a little bit slow to settle. There is a little bit of gap on turn on. It's not quite as fast. And there's the turn off. Let me reverse bias this and see what happens. Yeah, I can see a little effect there of junction capacitance. Cree uses a fairly large die in their LEDs. That's why they're such high quality LEDs. They're very bright and long lasting and all that good stuff. Okay, uh, here's that BC337 transistor which I used in the previous video. We'll look at its base to emitter junction. And, um, well, it just charges up to that 0.7 volt drop across the uh, you know, typical silicon diode or the uh, base emitter junction, and it's flat. So, just like in the other video, it's just not switching fast enough. Okay, we'll look at these. These are these you know, the little uh, switching type diodes. Small signal switching diodes you see in a lot of digital circuits. And let me get that forward biased. And it switches pretty fast, as expected. Let me turn that up. There is that big bump, there is that turn on delay. 
course the forward voltage drop again is about 0.7 volts so that's what you're seeing there here is the shot key switching type diode it's mainly meant for RF purposes and I'll hook that up even better switching characteristics as you can see there here's a germanium diode kind of fine as a detector in AM radio plug this guy in yeah it's kind of weird this have a kind of a slow turn on delay and a weird kind of roll off there look at that kind of rings let me stop that jittering so much and yeah, it's kind of a ringing effect okay let me switch that back Of course, these have a low voltage, forward voltage drop. This is your classic 1N4001 rectifier diode. And of course, it just charges up to 0.7 volt. Uh, forward voltage drop and it's not switching fast enough that's why you can't use these at for uh, high speed switching and what else do we have here I think this is a Zener diode I always wondered how fast these are at forward switching and yeah, they are it does switch but turns on pretty quick but it is slow to switch off I mean that one megahertz it's still a lot faster than a rectifier diode now here is a another power diode but it is a uh, fast recovery diode let's see what happens Eh, not fast enough. Yeah, there is a little bit of effect there, you see, but it's just, you know, it's, it's not not fast enough. They are good for switching up into uh, maybe uh, 100 kilohertz or so, depending on the diode, but at 1 megahertz, it simply isn't fast enough. Now I have these... My buddy up north sent these to me, and uh, look like a power rectifier of some sort. I don't know the voltage or the current. They look like something pretty old, and I don't see uh, any numbers or cathode or anode marking. That's weird. I bet that's reverse bias. Let me flip it around. Yep, yeah, it's acting like a normal diode. It's just not switching. And on reverse bias, you're probably seeing that because you know they have a very large um, area. You know, uh, the silicon area at the junction is fairly large size. And I'm guessing that's probably just the effect of capacitance. Well, that was fun. Just wanted to see what would happen with some of these silicon devices. A couple, uh, well, LEDs and germanium diode as well. See how fast they switch at 1 megahertz. Thanks for watching.